Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And yesterday we talked a little bit about the $867 trillion opportunity that tokenization does bring to the game. And uh, as we do look at NFTs, it seems as though the trend is practically dead. Um, and I do believe that this is going to start to have a major shift here soon, where NFTs are going to start to pick up a lot more traction. Um, in terms of tokenization, we actually see that this has been picking up some pace recently. I um, mean, I think that's all because of what's happening around a few players getting in on tokenization. We started to see JP Morgan talking a little bit more about it. Um, even, you know, BlackRock during 2023, which we will get to here in a second. Um, but what I want to talk about is NFTs. So as we look at NFTs, it seems as though this market has cooled off quite a bit since going all the way back to 2021. As you guys do see that massive steep um, rise in 2021, all the way up until about roughly January, the end of January of 2022. And then we've seen this crash completely. Uh, we also seen a spike back in the February, March of 2021, which is sort of when we start to see the rise of crypto punks and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, you already know the story with all of that. But nonetheless, as we look at NFTs today, we know that this is continuing to become a big trend. And it's only going to continue from here on out because NFTs are so much more than just art. Um, but we start to see Google. So Google Play um, looks like they are jumping in on the NFT game, Starbucks as well. I mean, this is starting to become a big deal yet again. I think that as we see this come back into this space and we start to see a little bit more of a focus put on NFTs and stuff like that, it's going to bring all the retail buzz back to crypto uh, like typical. But also, as we look at what's happening around um, NFTs and also around tokenization, there is still a big area of unexplored opportunity around tokenization. You got to remember that this is just starting. We're kind of seeing droplets of water in the bucket. Um, and this is going to be a big deal going forward on in time. And I've said it even in yesterday's video. Recently, Ripple Eyes tokenized asset sector as it expects market cap to reach $30 trillion. Um, this is all centered out on that new value report that I did talk about yesterday. But as we look at the $30 trillion opportunity around tokenization, I think that's much larger than that. Ultimately, they were looking at the $16 trillion business opportunity by 2030. But as we know, tokenization is becoming a big deal. And I think that this is going to be accelerated here soon as well by a lot of big players jumping in on it. In the US, for an example, US treasuries are already surpassing about $600 million. And a lot more crypto investors and institutional investors are jumping in on tokenized opportunities. Just recently, Bank de France governor proposes EU-focused DLT network for asset tokenization. And this is a huge power move. Listen, as a lot more of these areas, for example, uh, like France, jump in on the game around tokenization, this is going to be a big accelerant for all other areas to follow through. Um, I've talked a little bit about it with the UK, Singapore, UAE, Hong Kong, they all want to adopt tokenization because they see the value here. And this is to create a full on infrastructure centered out on DLT to adopt tokenization as a service. And this is going to be centered out on CBDCs, tokenized bank deposits, and even other digital currencies as well. And what do you see? Providing a tokenized settlement asset could also be rounded out by a European infrastructure in the euro area. Uh, that would bring together all tokenized assets, CBDC deposits, financial assets to guarantee interoperability between the different assets as well as the singleness of the currency. So very interesting. Um, and again, this is kind of centered out on that infrastructure that the IMF planned on back in June, which was the XC platform, I believe. Uh, we also seen the BIS talking a little bit more about it as well. But it seems as though all central bankers and the big players are centered out on tokenization, even the Bank of England as well. Uh, so this is going to become a big trend. Listen, this small spike that we've seen. So if we go back to the past 12 months, this is just a small little spike. This is really nothing. I think that tokenization is going to continue to become a much larger area of focus. Um, and it's it already is kind of starting. And you know what's funny? We recently seen, and I included this in a video on the main channel on NCash Official, um, we've seen just a $9 trillion asset manager BlackRock CEO says crypto will transcend international currencies due to global demand. 
I want you guys to listen closely to this, and, and, and then I want to focus on um, another article that I have open over here because it really kind of ties everything all together. More and more our global investors are asking us about the role of crypto. And as I said, I do believe a lot of crypto is, is going to be, it's an international asset. It's going, it is, um, it has a differentiating value versus other asset classes, but more importantly, because it's so international, it's going to transcend any one currency in currency valuation. If you just look at the value of, of our dollar, how it depreciated last two, two months and how much it appreciated over the last five years, I mean, a international crypto product can really transcend that. And that's why we believe there's great opportunities. And that's why we're seeing more and more interest. And that interest is broad-based worldwide. And again, you know, this is Larry Fink of BlackRock literally mentioned this, a $9 trillion asset manager. Imagine if BlackRock tokenized all of their assets that they manage on chain. I mean, that would be a huge game changer. And I think that this is what we will, you know, see at some point in time. We even know that Larry Fink has been very, very adamant about uh, tokenization. We even do see he says tokens are the next generation for markets. This goes all the way back to March of this year. He even said tokenization will be the next generation for markets. This is the future, right? The future is tokenization because anything, and I said it, anything of value will be tokenized. It's a huge game changer. It's a huge game changer. And we even do see, right, JP Morgan. Tokenization is killer app for traditional finance, JP Morgan says. Now, they were talking more so about this Onyx digital assets platform. Uh, I don't know about that so much. Um, but we do know that, you know, even they were focused on the traditional financial assets. So stocks and stuff like that. They were also, you know, working with a few big names like Goldman Sachs, BNP uh, Paribas and even DBS Bank. Um, they were really kind of looking at this, but we do see we think that tokenization is a killer app for traditional finance. If you think about private markets, private credit, private equity, and private real estate, they are pretty much double the size of public markets, but many orders of magnitude less liquid. So there's the huge disparity. And again, you know, tokenization opens the door for you know liquidity, and it, it's making illiquid asset classes more liquid. It's a game changer. It really is a game changer. And it's only going to become a much larger, a much larger area of focus. JP Morgan wants to bring trillions of dollars of tokenized assets to DeFi. And of course, guess what? The bank's recent tokenization of money market funds with BlackRock dovetails with an institutional DeFi project led by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Remember that money market funds have five trillion dollars in them at this current moment in time these two are working closely together and they see the big value behind tokenization i strongly believe strongly believe that tokenization is going to unlock trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars even city said that it's a killer use case and they even said that trillions in assets could be tokenized by 2030. It seems as though the outlook is 2030, right? And uh, they were talking about a couple trillion, like four to five and stuff like that, being a little bit more conservative. They give us a little bit of a viewpoint on some of the markets uh, that could be tokenized and the value behind them. I mean, there's hundreds of trillions of dollars out there that could very well be disrupted by tokenization. And we do see what DLT and tokenization offers an entirely new tech stack that lets all stakeholders do all activities on the same shared infrastructure as one golden source of data. No more expensive reconciliation, uh, settlement failures, waiting for the fax documents or originals to follow by post, or investment choices being restricted by operational difficulty and access. And yeah, you know, it's... I'm telling you, there's going to be a seismic wave of adoption around tokenization. It's only going to continue to grow from here on out. And remember that city. In terms of the um, amount of assets, right? They have $23 trillion worth of assets. They almost have a trillion dollars in assets under management. But imagine them tokenizing all of their assets. I mean, 
it's a game changer for a lot of these companies, for a lot of these big banks as well. I mean, any player around the financial sector will look at tokenization and say, that's it. That's, that's the next big thing. Tokenization is changing the way um, the financial industry is going to work and operate. It's, th this is something I, I strongly believe that a lot of people don't realize the game changer behind tokenization. The, the, the technology here is huge. And remember, like, these players like City, for an example, that are talking about how tokenization is, is becoming a big thing, this proves to us how big this market will be eventually as well. Because remember that City, not only do they have $4 trillion in financial flows, they have 13,000 plus institutional clients. Their clients include 90% of the global Fortune 500 companies. And this is, again, one of the largest, one of the largest banks out there. So as we look at these players that are getting very, very bullish on tokenization and even crypto like BlackRock, JP Morgan, Citi, DBS, Goldman Sachs, you name it, they're here for a reason. They see the value. And over the next couple of years, yeah, the entire space is going to look different. This is why I say focus on, you know, XRP, focus on Hedera, focus on Casper. You know, these are the these are the major projects, the networks that are changing the way and allowing for this innovation to really become a big big piece of the puzzle for finance and for a lot of these areas. So, with that being said, yeah, do I think that NFTs are dead? No, because we're going to, NFTs. Everyone looks at them in such a wrong way. It's not just art. Outside of the art, NFTs, you're going to see anything of value tokenized. You're going to start to see a lot more things being tokenized. I mean, right now, you could have concert tickets tokenized through NFTs. So NFTs, this might look dead. When this bounces back, this is going to bounce back in a very strong way. Because, it, uh, again, tokenization includes NFTs. These two go hand in hand. And we already see tokenization making a big move to the upside. Just wait for NFTs to, to do the same thing. This is going to be a trend to watch for. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. I, if you guys did enjoy the video, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. I'm trying to get this uh, YouTube channel to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Let's see what we can do. So with that being said, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.